Now we'll define the boundary conditions of the problem. First of all, it's going to be convenient to define a new polar coordinate system since our displacements are going to be defined radially from the center of the balloon. To do that, we'll select coordinate systems and then click on create coordinate system. From here, we can click on the geometry and we can select the balloon and hit apply and it'll automatically create a coordinate system at the center of that geometry. From here, just change the type from Cartesian to cylindrical. And then now we'll define x as the radial direction, y as the theta direction, and z is still the lengthwise direction. And then we'll just rename the coordinate system to polar so that we can find it easily later on. Now, the way that we're going to define the displacement in this problem is we're going to displace the balloon a certain distance radially and then we're going to contract it again and then let the contact separate and then let's see what happens when the stent is free. So in order to do that, we have to create two time steps. So we'll go to analysis settings and then we'll select number of steps as two. That way we can expand and then contract. From here, we'll change the auto time stepping controls to on. That way we can define the amount of sub-steps that we can break the problem down into. So we'll go with initial sub-steps, will be 200. And this will be to make sure that the balloon doesn't go straight through the stent on the first time step. The minimum time steps, we'll make 20. And then we'll make the maximum number of time steps 1 times 10 to the 5. And then lastly, we'll just turn large deflection on. So now the problem is ready to be defined by displacements using two different times by splitting it up into a couple different substeps. So we'll right click, insert a displacement. And because we're expanding the balloon, we'll select the balloon as a geometry for our displacement. Then we can define the coordinate system by our new polar coordinate system. And then we'll select our x component to be 0.3. So you can see from the graph that it'll ramp from zero to our prescribed displacement. And then right now it, it stays at that. But we can change that by selecting in the tabular data and then typing in zero. So now the balloon will expand and then contract. Now we'll also constrain the, constrain the rest of the balloon so that it doesn't move anywhere in the z direction and then it also doesn't rotate in the theta direction. We'll do that by setting the y component to zero and also the z component to zero. So that through the whole ramping process it doesn't move in the z or rotate in the y. Then to also constrain the movement of the stent we'll insert a frictionless support on the three symmetry faces. So this one will limit it in the z direction, this one will limit it in the y direction, and this one will limit the stent in the x direction. So we have all three directions. And we'll hit apply.